What's the matter? Who is it? You sure there are no physical symptoms? Jinx, I can't hear you. Jinx. Miles, I had such a horrible dream. And the worst part of it was, was when I woke up, I realized that my nightmare was better than my reality. Well, don't just lie there and think about it. Read a good book or, or see a late movie on TV or something. That won't do any good. My mind will keep coming back to it. Miles, I have to see you. That's not possible. Miles, you said that you make house calls. Why don't you make one to my house? That's only in case of emergencies. Well, what do you think this is? No, I meant a physical emergency, something that was life-threatening. And that's where you're wrong. You know what I've been thinking? I've been thinking that the worst part of this whole thing is the waiting, that it's much better just to get it over and done with right away. Please, now, don't talk like that. Miles, please, I, I need to see you. Please, I, I want to talk to you. I'm really scared. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Bye. She wants you to come over there, doesn't she? Yeah. She's having a bad attack of nerves. Nerves? Just well, nerves? she's in a state of depression. She's making threats about taking her own life. It's the only way to get her back on track is to go over there. Miles, please. I don't want you to go. I don't know, Chief. I mean, I, for one, am really worried about the guy. Look, the last time I was over at the hospital, Doc Ramos told me the only way he'd let Damien out is if he promised to go straight home into bed. And he didn't? No, he left the hospital and he went to, uh, somebody's house. I mean, somebody's <clears throat> house. He went to the Whitney house, didn't he? Yeah, well, look, all he wanted to do was say bon voyage. Hey, bon voyage. Are they going somewhere? Yeah, they're, uh... Going to Europe on a second honeymoon or something. As a matter of fact, Tyler says they'll probably be gone all winter. And so he thought it was so important to say goodbye to them that he disobeyed doctor's orders? Yeah, well, the funny thing is that they weren't even there when he got there, so the whole thing was for nothing. I don't know. Last time I saw him, he looked like he was running a pretty high fever to me. Calvin, why is it some of the brightest people I know are always dumb in two areas, their own health and women? Yes, Mallory. Uh, Derek, it's Miles. Miles? You're up awfully late. <laughs> well, I did not plan it that way. Listen, I just took a chance I might still find you at your desk. You know, if you'd called me ten minutes from now, you wouldn't have found me here. Well, then maybe my timing is perfect. Listen, I have a favor to ask of you. It's about Jinx Avery. Jinx? No, wait, what about her? Is she not sick again? No, it's nothing physical. I mean, no fainting spells or anything like that. She has had another kind of a fall, this time in spirits. No, what do you, what do you mean? Listen, I know that you've been seeing her now and then, right? Yeah, that's true. I haven't seen her. Well, otherwise, I would not have presumed. Look, she uh, seems to be depressed. Seriously depressed. What, did she call you up to tell you this? Yes, I don't think she would have unless the problem were extreme. <sighs> Miles, what is the problem? What's, what's put her in this state? Well, I suppose it's career problems, mostly. I'm sure she's talked to you about it. Oh, yes, yeah, she has talked about this, but... Well, I think it probably would have to go a little bit further than that. She she needs somebody to hold her hand, to talk to her, to make her feel like she's not alone. No, I understand that. Look, I realize this is a tremendous imposition. No, it's not an imposition at all. As a matter of fact, I'm very glad that you called. In other words, you will go see her? Yes, I'm just going to put a sweater on now, and I'll go right over to see her. Oh, thank you very much. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye. Calvin, we're finished with this stuff. Look, I've got to... I gotta change. I gotta go see a sick friend. It's fine by me. As a matter of fact, I was just thinking about the same thing. Ciao. Ciao. Oh, I 
feel so ashamed of myself. Hey, cut it out. It's okay. Derek will see her. He'll be more help to her than I could have been. Oh, no, that's not true. She wanted you there. If she wanted Derek, she would have called I'm her doctor. That's why she thought of me first. Yes, but she's dependent on you. You, you give her strength. Unfortunately, I'm dependent on you, too. You think I want to leave my nice warm bed? My nice warm wife? But you would have gone over there if I hadn't made you stay here. Maybe. But Derek will be better medicine for her than anything I could have prescribed. Yes, but you are the only one that she can talk to about her situation. I know. Well, that's the point. Derek doesn't know. He won't be a reminder to her. He will represent life. And love? Well, that's something she needs very much right now. Only medicine is going to do her any good. Yes, I suppose so. But I just wonder if Derek is the solution. What a mess. The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth like the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. It is twice blessed. It blesseth him that gives and him that takes. Tis mightiest in the mightiest. It becomes the throne monarch better than his crown. His scepter shows the something, something, his something, something. But mercy is above the sceptered sway. It is enthroned in the hearts of kings. Etc., etc., etc. <laughs> Your turn. Yes, yes you're right. right. I think I might have forgotten some of the work. No, no, listen to him out there. That was great. Listen, you're going to be a star. Come oh. on, get out there, you. Thank you. Approach the bench. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we are gathered here today on the side of God in this courtroom to decide whether this man and this woman should be united in holy matrimony. Your Honor, I object. Objection overruled. Attorney Julius Newcomb, 
You take this woman to be your junior partner. Full partner, Your Honor. A junior partner to have and to hold from this time forth, for better, for worse, in sickness and in health, for richer, for poorer, so long as ye both shall practice. I do. I do. Dorothy Bannister. Objection. My name is Dee Dee, Your Honor. Please raise your right hand. You didn't make him swear on the Bible. It's different in your case, honey. Counselor. Okay, honey, put your hand on the book. I solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. I still don't see what this has to All right. All right, I swear. Dee Dee Bannister, do you take this corporate lawyer to be your legal spouse? Do you promise to love, honor, and obey him? Objection. Uh, the bridegroom will ignore that last remark. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, do you uh, promise to love, honor, and cherish him for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer? You won't have to worry about that part, honey. Forsaking all others, so long as ye both shall live. Forsaking all others? Have you reached a verdict, Miss Bannister? Yes, I suppose I have. Wait! Your Honor, I object! Calvin! Who are you? I'm a police officer. I'm here On to what arrest this woman. On what charge? What, what grand larceny? She's stolen my heart. Objection! Your Honor, objection! Restrain that man! Order in the court. Dee Dee Bannister, it is the judgment of this court that you will accept the marriage proposal of Julius Newcomb as the only proper and sensible course in your life. Now, say I will. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. I will. I will. I have to. What would you rather rely on? Something wimpy? Miles? Hmm? I can't stop thinking about what I just did. You didn't do anything. Oh, yes, I did. I forced you to do something that went entirely against your grain. I know how you are with your patients. Nicole, I promise you. There's very little I would have been able to do for Jinx, except just be with her. Did you want to be? No. Of course not. Are you sure Derek is going right over there? Yeah. Yeah, he didn't hesitate two seconds when I asked him to. Oh, it seems so unfair to him to invest all that emotion in somebody who's so sick. Maybe a... Maybe what? Well, I was just about to say that if things do start to get really serious between them, maybe I ought to have a little talk with Jinx. Just to urge her to share the truth with Derek. You think she'd agree to do that? I don't know. I think she'd lose him. I mean, not that he'd turn away from her, but it just wouldn't be the same. It couldn't be. Well, it wouldn't be easy. But it would have to be her decision. I certainly couldn't tell Derek. I Nor know. could you. I know, I know, I know. Your promise. It's a promise that can't be broken, Nicole. Not ever. you're going to let me come in or chase me away. How did you know I was even... I, I mean, you know, most nice girls don't accept callers at this time. It must be 1.30 in the morning. Well, no, it's closer to 2. Oh, wait a minute. Miles called you. Yes. I see. He didn't want to come, so he sent a substitute. No, look, Miles couldn't come, and I did want to come. I see. 
You don't have to accept the substitute. Uh, just close the door in my face. And... <laughs> no, come in. So good so far. Miles called me and told me that you were feeling very depressed. And he knew that I was still at the office, but I knew that he was home in bed still, trying to get some sleep. He's got to be at the hospital very early in the morning. You wouldn't want him to fall asleep in the middle of curing a patient, would you? <laughs> but if you think I should, I'll, I'll go. No, no, please, come in. Uh, let me have your coat. Oh, I'm sorry I acted that way. Thanks. Really, it's just that I, I don't know, I was looking forward to seeing a doctor. I thought he could cheer me up, give me a magic pill or a, a shot, something to bring the rainbow back. Well, I'm afraid in that regard, I won't be much good. You don't have to worry about that. Listen, why don't uh, I, I get you a glass of wine? Would you like that? Yeah, I'd love a glass of oh, wine. Good. I'll join you. Maybe that will uh, make me feel a little better, cheer me up. We could do a little talking. Well, that usually picks me up when I'm feeling depressed. Hmm. Do you uh, feel depressed often? I think I feel depressed too often, but that comes with the job. Or maybe that comes with living alone for too long. Well, why don't you uh, tell me a, a little about it? I mean, about your work, and, and I'm really interested to know what you think about when you're feeling down or depressed. You want to hear about police work? I do. <laughs> All right. In the morning, I start off with the criminals, and by the afternoon, I've worked up to the victims. And by the time I go home at night, it's very difficult not to believe the whole world is a cesspool. There's the cesspool. It's a tough struggle not to become cynical or bitter or unfeeling. Well, I could never see you that way. <laughs> Believe me, I have been, and that's why I'm still single. But look, I uh, came over to cheer you up, not depress you. Oh, no, you're not. Please, please, keep talking. You have no idea how much it's helping. Well, I think the point of what I was trying to say is that, sure, everybody knows a policeman's work is hazardous, but I think the real hazard is probably to a policeman's emotions, uh, dealing with the pain and suffering. You can get through it. It's, it's, it's a great work. And uh, it seems like you like to work a lot. It may not be much of a life, but without my work, I wouldn't have any life. Well, I think that work's very important. As a matter of fact, that's why I've joined this um, group. Well, it's, it's not a job, and it's not really much of a group either. Well, tell me about it. Come on. Well, it's a, a bunch of young hopefuls, you know, hoping for a, a bright future. But sometimes I think that they're really fooling themselves about the future. But then I think we uh, all do that sometimes. Well, you like them anyway? Well, yes, they seem very nice. As a matter of fact, one of them was just here a couple of hours ago. I know, I think he's the uh, matinee idol. Johnny Gentry, he calls himself. Uh, I don't think that's his real name. What was he doing here? Well, he just rang the doorbell and, I don't know, wanted to spend the evening with me. Just like that? Yes. <laughs> I get the feeling that most women just usually fall at his feet at the mere invitation. Well, he didn't force himself on you, did he? No, no, he didn't, no. Just put down your badge, Chief. <laughs> I think he thought he was doing me a favor. That's show business. Yeah, well, maybe he can deal with me the next time he comes around here. Well, now, settle down. Don't be so indignant. I mean, this is hardly the first time that uh, I've been propositioned. How'd you get rid of him? Oh, very easy. I just told him that uh, I never sleep with men I don't like. And I don't like men I don't know. And he was very nice about it. Well, it doesn't make me like him very much. You're getting very angry. Yes. And uh, a little resentful. Yes. And uh, maybe a little jealous. Yes. Well, you don't have to worry. Because um, I feel like I know you, Derek Mallory. <laughs> you a dozen times. I thought you were drunk or dead in here. I'm not dead yet, Calvin. 
You know, you really are crazy, you know, that I got a good mind to get on horn and call an ambulance. You do that and I'll deck you. Yeah, sure, tough guy. You gotta stand up first. Here, come on. I'll cover you up before you freeze to death. Oh, hey, don't worry about me. I'm gonna be just fine. Oh. I saw... I saw... Bobby Gerard in this room, Calvin. Now you really do need a hospital. You got the DTs. No, I, I wanted to ask her where she went after she left the Whitney Mansion. She could have gone anywhere, Tyler. I mean, she could have gone to Hoffman's Antique Jewelry if she'd made it that Calvin, time. listen to me. I'm not crazy. Yeah, I know. You're just sick. Calvin, this is not just some crazy idea. Listen, it was Sky Whitney who drove Bobby Gerard into the woods and killed her. Mm -hmm. 